Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, as promised, our journey into the different parts of the eye begins. In the previous lecture, we talked about an overview of the eye, where all the parts kind of are, how they kind of, you know, connect to each other, their locations, and why that's important. Now we're going to start going through structure by structure, talking about why it's important to us and uh, why not start with, in my opinion, the most important and awesome one, the cornea. Now, the reason for that being is that there is not a single structure in the eye that we as opticians deal with more. The cornea is front and center. It's responsible for a lot of vision. It's where we fit contact lenses. It is the holy grail of opticianry. I don't think anyone's ever said that before, so don't quote me on that. However, it is very much how I feel. Now let's jump into a little bit more information about the cornea. So first of all, let's take a look at a cross section of the eye. Uh, based on the last lecture, you should have a little bit of an idea of where that is, or so where, that, where the cornea is, and here it is highlighted in red. Now keep in mind that when you're looking at an eye, when you're looking at people, you can't actually see the cornea. You're gonna see the iris, you're gonna see the pupil, you might see a few other things. However, the cornea is completely transparent, so you may actually be looking at it, but you're not seeing it. Uh, but it is the most anterior structure of the eye. It's front and center right after the lids. So it's something that is always observed, just might not always be able to see the tissue itself. Now, the primary purpose of the cornea is refraction, uh, which is critical to normal vision. Uh, its overall power is approximately 43 diopters. Now, I understand that you know in this course, different people may be coming f with different experience. Um, and we're gonna go through all these concepts. So sometimes if there's a concept or a word that doesn't make a whole lot of sense just right off the hop, uh, don't worry because it's all gonna come together. But I'm gonna try to elaborate as much as possible whenever these things come up. Now the concept of refraction is basically our entire job as opticians. It's the bending of light for a desired purpose. So vision, the way it works, and again, we'll go over this in more detail soon, but it takes light from the outside. Usually there's parallel rays of light and they have to be converged, so brought together inside the eye onto the retina, and then all the magic of vision happens. So that concept is called refraction. In order to refract light, you need powered lenses, and the power of lenses are usually measured in diopters. So those are the, the concept of a diopter is something that an optician should know in absolute detail. So this lens, essentially, the cornea is, uh, which is responsible for refraction, is 43 diopters strong. Now, if you do have some experience in uh, the dispensary and you've seen lenses and um, you've seen different prescriptions come through, think of the powers you see. You see, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you know, a few more higher than that uh, diopter prescriptions, either plus or minus. You don't see a whole lot of 20s, 30s, or 40s. As a matter of fact, I guarantee you've never seen a 40 diopter prescription. So just think of how strong this is. And this has a lot to do with the fact that you know the eye is quite small and it has to converge light quite quickly. And the more dioptric power there is in a lens, the quicker it happens. So um, again, this is just, I'm rambling. You're going to learn more about this, but just for the principle is, is that this is a very strong converging lens at the front of the eye. It's responsible for most of the refractive power of the eye, actually two thirds of it, write that down, two thirds of the refracting power of the eye. Okay. And I say write that down because you should be following along with the workbook, uh, filling in the blanks and writing additional notes as we go on. So the cornea is also highly innervated making it the most sensitive tissue in the human body. What does innervated mean? It means it's lots and lots of nerves. Uh, it does this to protect itself. You know, uh, front and center, like I talked about, the most anterior surface of the eye, it needs to be able to feel stuff if there's any kind of danger, dust, debris, any kind of, you know, problems that are coming up, uh, elicits a response to close the eyelids, shut things down and protect. Uh, so it does have to be highly innervated, very, very sensitive. Uh, if you've ever scratched your cornea, you will know just how innervated it is. It is not a good time. So very, very innervated. 
part of the body. Uh, now, most tissue uh, in the body derive oxygen and nutrients from the blood. This should not be news to you. Probably in you know high school science, you kind of went over that. Every tissue, the blood, the organs, everything. There's blood vein, there's blood vessels, there's capillaries, there's all sorts of stuff running through there to make sure that the tissue is permeated with blood because that is the main source of oxygen and nutrients. Interestingly, the cornea is one of the only tissues in the entire body that does not have blood vessels coursing through it. This is because it's, uh, well, let's answer this, it's because it's avascular, no blood vessels, um, and therefore it must find other means of nourishment. Why do you think the cornea is avascular? Could it have something to do with the fact that it needs to be transparent so that light could pass through? Right, so very smart way of making this kind of structure is the idea that we need to be able to have a perfectly transparent uh, surface and structure. However, the problem is, is that if things are, you know, if blood vessels are coursing through this tissue, very difficult for it to be perfectly transparent. So the cornea fortunately has a different way of getting nourishment, getting oxygen, getting everything it needs, which we will talk about on the next slide. So understanding how the cornea works, how it maintains its transparency, how it refracts light, has a lot to do with its structure. So the first thing that we have to keep in mind is that the cornea is detergescent, a relative state of dehydration which keeps it transparent. Not a lot of tissues in the bottom body are detergescent, meaning not a whole lot of fluid or, or, or liquid in them. Uh, just another thing that makes the cornea special, right? So interestingly is that, you know, if you ever have a corneal injury and it swells, which it does, uh, vision starts to suck because more fluid is in the, in the cornea. It doesn't allow it to do its refractive, uh, you know, duties as well. Uh, so it is something to keep in mind that, you know, this level of detergescence is not always maintained during injury and things like that. So it's, it's a very important concept in the cornea to maintain its ability to be transparent and uh, refract light. Now, a lot of the other things that go on in here have a lot to do with the structures. Now, every single structure we're going to talk about has layers. Just like you can see, this is the cornea of kind of a cross section with all its layers. I'm not going to tell you all the layers of every single structure. However, in the cornea, they do play because uh, they have interesting, every layer has, you know, or some of the layers have interesting functions that allow these also interesting uh, mechanisms to function. So the top layer is the epithelium, which is almost every tissue you see has an epithelium. It's usually the outside layer. Your skin has, you know, has an epithelium. Your, your, all the organs have epithelial layers. So the cornea is no different. Underneath the epithelium is Bowman's layer, uh, a little bit a tough structure that allows and, or helps with support. The big chunk here is the stroma. The stroma is the bulk of the cornea, also the big part that's, that helps it be detergescent. And underneath that is Desmond's membrane and the endothelium. Now we're going to talk a little bit now about what these guys do. So first, and we're going to start with the bottom, the endothelium acts as a pump, which removes fluid from the cornea and helps transport nutrients. Now, if you think about the original slide that we showed in the last lecture about how the cornea kind of covers uh, the front of the eye and behind it is all, are all the other structures. We talked about the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is right behind the cornea and the posterior surface, the back surface of the cornea, makes contact with the aqueous humor that's inside of the anterior chamber. So this pump allows, the endothelium allows fluid to pump in and out of the cornea, maintaining that level of detergescence that it wants. And this is what allows it to be uh, transparent and refractive. Now, <clears throat> there are some diseases of the eye, uh, one particular one called Fuchs dystrophy, where the endothelium starts to not be very good, starts to be defective, and it doesn't allow this to happen, and the cornea swells. So we know that the end of good functioning endothelium is extremely important to vision, so that it can maintain that detergescent state, and so that it can remain transparent. Now we talked about the avascularity of the cornea and how it doesn't have any blood going through it and how you know most tissue need blood to survive. And the main reason for that is oxygen. Now oxygen for the cornea is derived from the tear film on the outside through the epithelium. Um, and also, we haven't mentioned it here, but also the nourishment, you know, glucose and different things that it needs, all the cofactors and whatnot can be derived from the aqueous humor, which is, uh, 
being pumped through on the uh, endothelium. So just a couple little pieces, and like, we can go, we can talk about the cornea for hours and hours and hours, but I don't think it's going to serve you uh, well to have, be bombarded by just cornea stuff. And, and when we start talking about contact lenses, we're going to go into more depth about when things go wrong. So just for the time being, remember that it is transparent, it's detergescent, it is highly innervated, and it's avascular. If you can remember those things, you are going to be in pretty good shape. And finally, uh, as promised, we are going to go through the optician significance, as we will in every single lecture, because it's important to know why we're learning this stuff. Uh, and I think you probably have a pretty good idea as to why this stuff's important. I've mentioned it a number of times. However, the cornea is critical of vision. Without a cornea, you can't see. That can be said for a lot of parts, mind you. However, it all starts with the cornea. And actually, you're going to see a lot of stuff in the future that's all cornea related when it comes to vision because after all opticians are responsible for vision dysfunction disease or trauma equals visual problems the moment you have a problem with the cornea everything unravels to varying degrees right sometimes people can have minor problems and have minor vision issues if they have major problems they have major vision issues so Keeping in mind that, you know, if we want to give people the best vision, provide them the best uh, experience, we best hope that their cornea is in good shape. So you see where this is going? So, you know, as an optician, we talk about lenses and troubleshooting that and understanding how to fit them into frames and, and, and getting everything to work. But if your cornea is not working, then what are, what are we doing with all these lenses? So we have to understand you know, the very basics of how this all works so that everything else falls in place afterwards. Now, uh, this is going to serve you well in future lectures when we start talking about the mechanisms of vision, but remember that the cornea represents most of the optics of the eye. Um, Two-thirds, which is most, there's still, now keep in mind, there's still a lot of other parts of the optics of the eye, but it is still most of the optics of the eye. Um, and it really helps us to understand how uh, things work, how lenses work, and how vision works. We understand that you know the, a lot of the optics, a lot of the power, that 43 diopters of refractive power that we talked about is coming from the cornea. And um, something that we're going to be talking about in the future is paramount to contact lens theory. The cornea go, sorry, the contact lens goes directly onto the cornea. Uh, it's and it has an interface on the tear layer and uh, it's extremely important to understand the concepts of corneal curvature uh, exactly how you know tear exchange works and uh, how to maintain a healthy cornea as well so learn to love the cornea because we're going to be talking a heck of a lot more about it uh, but now that you have an understanding of its basic premises you know it's it's basic properties you're much better off now to be able to understand all the future stuff we're going to talk about all right again hope you enjoyed this one i'll see you in the next one